If you will, uh, the gentleman would come forward. We're joined today by the seven members of the Loft uh, Hacker Think Tank in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, due to the sensitivity of the work done at the Loft, they'll be using their hacker names of Mudge, Weld, Brian Oblivion, Kingpin, Space Rogue, Tan, and Stefan. Gentlemen. <laughs> I, uh, I hope my grandkids don't ask me who my witnesses were today and <laughs> say space rogue. But we do, uh, we do understand your, uh, your need to do that. We appreciate your being with us. Uh, do you, uh, may I ask your name in the middle? Uh, I'm Mudge. You're Mudge. Mudge, would you like to make a statement? Yes, I would. Um, thank you very much for having us here. Uh, we think this is hopefully a very great step forward and uh, are thrilled that, that the government in general is, is starting to approach the hacker community. Um, we think there's a tremendous asset that the hackers actually bring to the table here in an understanding. Um, my handle is Mudge. Uh, I and the six individuals seated before you, which will run down the line, Brian Oblivion. Uh, this is uh, John Tan. Kingpin, uh, Weld Pond, Space Rogue, and Stefan Von Neumann uh, make up the hacker group known as The Loft. Uh, for the past four years, the seven of us has been touted as just about everything from uh, the hacker conglomerate, a hacker think tank, uh, the hangout place for the top U.S. hackers, uh, network security experts, and a consumer watch group. Uh, in reality, all we really are is just curious. For well over the past decade, the seven of us have independently learned and worked in the fields of satellite communications, uh, cryptography, operating system de design and implementation, computer and network security, uh, electronics and telecommunications. Throughout our learning process, uh, we've made a few waves with some large companies such as Microsoft, uh, IBM, Novell, and Sun Microsystems. At the same time, the top hackers and the uh, top legitimate cryptographers and computer security professionals pay us visits when they're in town uh, just, just to see what we're currently working on. So we, we kind of figure we must be doing something right. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, let the various members talk about a few of their previous projects, uh, their current projects, and what they're going to be working on in the future. Um, Weld? And if uh, okay. you've heard the testimony this morning, if there yes. are any points that in the process that you want to make uh, fairly briefly uh, mm -hmm. with regard to some of the previous questions or or testimony, you can feel free to do that also. Definitely will. Uh, good morning. My name is Weld Pond. I'm a hacker and programmer with over 10 years' experience um, working as a software developer in the so commercial software industry. Uh, my college training is as a computer engineer. At the Loft, I specialize in writing software programs for exploring computer network security and operating system security. Uh, my current projects include finding vulnerabilities in Microsoft Windows NT security. I'm actively working on Loftcrack, a program that we've created to exploit the weaknesses in Windows NT's password security, which uses cryptography to uh, secure the passwords, but we have found vulnerabilities in their implementation. Uh, this program has been extremely well received by military, government, and corporate security groups who use it to test their own passwords for weaknesses. Um, prior to the release of this program, um, Security experts claimed it would take thousands of years to uncover a um, Windows NT password, and we, our program can do it in uh, days and sometimes, some cases, hours. Um, as a licensed amateur radio operator, I also enjoy radio communications. Um, a future project plan is collaborating with the Loft Hardware people to uh, create uh, secure public wireless networks, um, something that we're very interested in. Good morning. My name is Kingpin. I am the youngest member of the Loft and one of the electrical engineers and hardware hackers. Uh, while some of the Loft members concentrate on software programming, I work with hardware design and implementation of electronic circuits. My interests include embedded system design, surveillance and counter surveillance tools, and wireless data transmissions. My current research project involves experimentation with the monitoring and eavesdropping of stray electromagnetic fields from computer terminals, otherwise known as Tempest Monitoring. Using low-cost electronic equipment, 
one can capture the contents of computer screens from more than 200 meters away, possibly gaining passwords and other sensitive information. The phenomenon of Tempest monitoring has been known to the industry for decades, but there is not much unclassified information available on how to both capture the emissions and also protect oneself from becoming an eavesdropping victim. My research will not only help me learn about the monitoring technology, it will enable me to educate others to help them protect their computer systems from prying eyes. My name is uh, John Tan. At uh, 28, I've been involved with computers, telecommunications, and security for 14 years now, the last eight of which have been spent in the financial services industry. Uh, my involvement with the loft has primarily been nondescript, but I've uh, achieved some notoriety uh, in terms of uh, documentation of some existing problems with uh, Novell Netware and a uh, compilation of uh, my newly created uh, Palm Pilot document library. Uh, recently, I've consulted for various manufacturing, financial services, and uh, uh, management consulting firms regarding uh, information security policy and uh, how to establish a corporate security effort. Uh, I will continue uh, in the future to, to pursue an understanding of the, the risks of the information age and uh, communicate those findings to the government, the industry, and the media to provide a clear, consistent message of where we are and where we need to go. Good morning. I'm Space Rogue. Although my background contains no formal computer training, I have amassed a great deal of knowledge in computer security and the use of technology applications in the area of physical security. Currently, I'm working on assessing the vulnerabilities in various proximity detection devices, such as those used by EasyPass, Mobile Speed Pass, and controlled access cards. In conjunction with Stefan von Neumann, seated here today, and others in the hacking community, I'm acting seeking vulnerabilities in Apple Share IP by Apple Computer. I wish to take this opportunity to thank the members of this committee for inviting us here today. Good morning. Uh, my pen name is Brian Oblivion. My focus currently is microprocessor system design, satellite communications equipment, wireless communications architecture, and systems administration. Over the past few years, I have conducted research on the cellular networks, exploring the unencrypted data channels and their protocols explored uh, and explore the easily bypassed hardware-based non-cryptographic authentication used to track call expenses. Recently, I'm researching various digital decoding methodologies involving both dedicated hardware and software analysis via digital signal processing. This will result in the exposing of claimed secure wireless messaging and communication systems, and thus increasing the requirement of a more secure communications infrastructure. As an amateur radio operator, I am exploring authentication methods for amateur radio data networks. Uh, technology developed in this area, arena will be applied to commercial wireless networking products, uh, protocols and equipment that will utilize not only authentication, but encryption of the radio channel as well. The loss for me provides a much needed avenue for the dissemination of the present state of insecurity among various consumer networks and products. If it wasn't for groups such as ours and other motivated individuals in the security community, the state of awareness we have today would be years behind. Thank you. My name is Stefan von Neumann. I have been working with Loft since 1993, focusing primarily on high power electronics, flaws in data networks, and the increasing convergence of power distribution and data distribution. My professional background includes supporting users on common computing products and networks, which gives me first-hand experience with how relatively unaware of computing risks most users are. Even worse, software publishers, internet providers, and utility companies are tight-lipped about flaws or risks inherent in products and services that touch the daily lives of most Americans. For example, in many areas of the country, including Boston area, Electric utility companies are using radio transmissions and or power lines to transmit data, meter data, from customer, uh, customer locations. The same utility companies are also using such data transmissions for controlling their power systems. Even public water companies are using radio transmissions for controlling their water systems. In the same way that the so-called phantom controller was able to impersonate an airport control tower and issue instructions to a pilot, one could impersonate a legitimate utility company and disrupt water or electric service. Another example is internet data sent over cable television systems. Most customers of these services are not aware of the potential for another user to watch their 
private, quote unquote, communications across the cable TV network. And worse, the users are not aware of the possibility that an improperly configured computer could make available their data without their knowledge. I would personally like to see that the same type of independent review process that should exist for software companies extended to utility companies and internet service providers. Finally, customers and end users should be made aware of the risks. Thank you for having us here. Um, I'm one of the network system and cryptography wizards uh, at the loft. Basically, I'm the person who breaks into the systems uh, and undermines the network security, and that's what I do in my day job. Uh, <laughs> companies like that. Some of my previous projects were Loftcrack, along with WeldPond, uh, in which we developed the tool to, for showing administrators and users the insecurities of Microsoft's passwords. Uh, I've released several security advisories on various pieces of commercial software, which have uh, prompted vendor patches, which means they improved the software after we pointed it out to them. Uh, unfortunately, many times they would not improve the software until we actually went public with the findings. Uh, companies do indeed want to ignore problems as long as possible. Uh, it's cheaper for them. Um, Recently, I conducted training courses at NASA's Jet Propulsion Labs to try and raise their level of awareness uh, as to the vulnerabilities, uh, especially with uh, the name brand recognition. Uh, in the very near future, I'll be conducting uh, training courses over at the NSA. Shortly after that, the Loft will be releasing a white paper on new cryptographic weaknesses that I, along with one of the top United States cryptographers, uh, have found in a very prominent commercial operating system, which will remain nameless. If you're a... Uh, if you're looking for computer security, then the internet is not the place to be. Uh, if you think that you're an exception to the norm and that you have a secure setup that communicates over the internet, uh, you're probably mistaken. Um, furthermore, if you feel that the government is giving you access to the enabling technology you need to combat this problem, you're wrong yet again. Uh, the foundation of the internet is over 20 years old at this point. While the technology still works, it's being asked to perform tasks that it was never intended to, uh, via secure fashions nonetheless. Uh, how can one be pr expected to protect a system on a network where any of the seven individuals seated before you can tear down the foundation that the network was built upon, let alone the systems that are sitting on top of it? So even if computers, systems, and other peripherals on the network were secure, the problem is still moot. Can the systems be secured? Well, in many cases, they actually can be. Uh, for instance, the problem with the phantom air traffic controllers could be remedied by incorporating relatively trivial and inexpensive cryptographically secure authentication. The same would hold true for MDC 4800, which is the protocol most commonly used by mobile police data terminals to remotely pull and update records. Personal paging protocols, uh, everybody has a little personal pager nowadays, uh, such as Poxag, Flex, and Golay, which the White House Communications Agency uses to coordinate movements of the president would also benefit from this relatively trivial modification. Why don't strong authentication properties exist in these protocols? Most likely the same reason that simple security mechanisms are missing from all of the software, or almost all of the software, sold to cor corporations and agencies today. It's cheaper, and it's easier for companies to sell insecure software. There's no liability attached to the manufacturers, and there's no policing done to stop companies from selling insecure software under the guise of secure. In an industry, industry where time to market matters, who wants or cares to add security or even thoroughly test their product? Well, you should. You, the government and consumer, should care and want software products to include security and authentication mechanisms, and I think you do. You should encourage the companies to include this in their products and hold them liable when their products fail. Uh, there are parts of the situ situation that the government can directly help. Lifting the constraints on cryptographic export would encourage companies to more readily include authentication and encryption in their products. The Cellular Telecommunications Protection Act is an example of legislation that is in place right now that hinders consumer watch groups such as ourselves, um, thus perpetuating the insecurity status quo that's out there. Yeah. Uh, in conclusion, hopefully you're having us here is not a fluke, and hopefully we've not offended in any way, uh, but this might be the beginning of an ongoing dialogue uh, between the government and hacker groups such as ourselves. Uh, perhaps the information from such meetings will end up becoming an enabling mechanism for future change that will help organizations of all sizes, not just large government organizations. Uh, we encourage you to read the written testimony, uh, and we are more than happy to answer any questions in as much detail uh, or technical detail or non-technical detail uh, as you see fit uh, and expound or clarify upon any concerns. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
and uh, you have not offended any of us, and, and uh, just the contrary. I think it's it's probably uh, appropriate that gentlemen such as yourself are the ones who, who come forward and demonstrate that the emperor has no clothes. Uh, so we appreciate your coming here, especially in light of the fact that the Washington Post described you as rock stars of the computer hacking elite. Uh, so uh, we appreciate uh, your being with us here today. Um, I'm informed that you uh, think that it, within 30 minutes, the seven of you could uh, make the Internet unusable for the entire nation. Is that correct? That's correct. Actually, one of us with just a few packets. Um, I, we've, we've told a few agencies about this. Uh, it's kind of funny because we think that this is something that the various government agencies should be actively going after. We know the Department of Defense just did a very large uh, um, investigation into what's known as denial of service attacks against the infrastructure. Uh, in our various day jobs, we contributed a large portion of the information to that uh, actual um, investigation. Uh, much to our chagrin, the learnings from it were instantly classified, uh, which we were giving them largely public information. Uh, it, it is very trivial with the old protocols to segregate and separate the different major long-haul providers, uh, which would then be the national access points, the metropolitan area ether uh, sections, AT&T can't talk to MCI, can't talk to PSINet, can't talk to Alternet, et cetera, et cetera, and keep it down that way as long as we really wanted to. It would definitely take a few days for people to figure out what was going on. You, uh, you state that, uh, that uh, with regard to, to commerce over the Internet, which is uh, rapidly growing, as we all know, that uh, the Internet was not designed for it. Well, what do you mean by that? Uh, the Internet was designed out of the uh, Defense Department's Advanced Research Project Agency to simply have computers talk to each other. Um, this was a very laudable act and a laudable goal, and I think they succeeded fantastically. Uh, this was largely an academic environment uh, with some government research organizations. It grew up, it flourished, it, it struck everybody by surprise, and now big business is saying, well, let's, let's, um, let's jump on board and uh, make some money off of this. Well. You know, this, this is kind of like if you've driven in Boston, you know, the streets aren't tremendously designed in a wonderful fashion because they followed the cows around and laid the pavement down. I mean, you can get it to work, but it can be really painful. And that's the stage we're in right now. You say that you've been working with uh, some of our gov governmental agencies with regard to, to some of these problems. And, uh, of course, with commercial uh, Entities. You know, it occurs to me in listening to you and, and listening to our prior witness that um, there doesn't seem to be an inducement for industry to do much about this at this stage of the game. That's what you're saying, essentially, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I hope that, uh, that there are some, some more forward-looking people in some of these industries than we've had in times past. You can look at uh, the automobile industry or the uh, tobacco industry or any number of industries. Uh, have kept their heads in the sand, or t chief executives, about problems on the horizon. And uh, this is going to be something, as much as we dislike lawsuits, and there's too many of them uh, in this country, this is clearly going to be something that is going to hit somebody big time one of these days before very long. And, and uh, hopefully it won't, uh, it won't take an a, a economic um, disaster, you know, to cause all that. But you can see it on the horizon, can't you? I mean, they're going to have to come to terms with the fact that their ability to do something about this is out there, uh, and they're turning their back on a, on a way to, uh, uh, to make their systems more secure. They're not doing it. And they're going to be uh, clearly having to answer for that. You say that, that the Internet and com computer security is almost non-existent. Could you elaborate on that a bit? What, what do you, you mean literally? Um, there, are, there are many aspects that make that up. Uh, the operating systems, as we just heard testimony from Dr. Neumann, uh, very correctly, uh, aren't incorporating any sort of real security mechanisms. There is a lack of education, and there is a lack of understanding as to what the problems are out there. Uh, there, is, there are no mechanisms for 
uh, places to keep their uh, keep abreast of current findings. I mean, the security realm and the network security uh, in particular is very rapidly changing. Uh, so it's kind of difficult. It's not like, what was the analogy with the, the cars? Somebody give a, the recall? They send you a, a letter if, if your Ford Explorer is going to have a very serious problem. Um, the number of operating systems out there, uh, they aren't sending people the letters. They're saying, you have to do your own due diligence and come to us and find out what we've made publicly available or what we've decided to uh, alert you to. At the same time, um, keep in mind that uh, if we don't alert you to it, uh, we save a lot of money and we save our top engineers' times by not having to throw them at the product where they can add new bells and whistles into whatever. Uh, Let me just add something to that. Yeah, me. please. Well, the, the analogy was that the uh, Volkswagen Beetle that just got recalled, evidently they found three cars that had a problem, three. Um, and they didn't cause any serious deaths or injuries, but they just found three potential problems in the vehicle. They sent out 8,500 letters to every purchaser of the vehicle in the United States. Um, if, there, if there's a software company that has three hack attempts against it, or three successful hack attempts against it, uh, a particular piece of software or an operating system, they're not going to go call every single one of their people that just spent you know, a lot of money buying